Today we're going to take a look at this Buslink USB 3.0 eSATA Cypher Shield hard drive. Essentially what this is, is a dual drive hard drive uh, case with obviously USB 3 and eSATA. However, it uses hardware encryption to scramble all the data on the drive. So the way this one works isn't with software encryption, it actually uses a hardware based encryption system with specific hardware keys that unlock the data. These are the keys, I have two of them. They are, um, they use the Firewire connector of all things and they're just kind of an acrylic thing with supposedly like a little smart card chip in it, although we'll open one of these up in a bit. And the way this works is you just insert the key and it decrypts the data. It's that simple. You remove the key, the drive instantly disconnects from the computer and this data is scrambled again. Uh, the advantage of this is you don't have to worry about passwords or anything, you just need the physical key. There's no ability to turn it on or off, so it's always encrypted so you always know it's safe. There is a, a simple 12 volt power input and the SATA and the USB 3. There's also the tiniest fan in the world. And there's a button that I'm not really sure what it does. I think it has something to do with backup software, but I don't have the software, so it doesn't do anything. But the case is a pretty heavy uh, metal case. This particular model is eight terabytes, which is actually why I bought it, because I figured what the hell, even if this thing doesn't work or there's something wrong with it, whatever, I can just use the uh, hard drives, which I did, and they're actually in the NAS right now. Uh, this came with two four terabyte Seagate drives, the uh, 5400 or so RPM ones, and they work just fine. Um, I was actually having a lot of problems with this. Uh, the drive itself wouldn't work properly. It kept powering down the drives and stuff, so I'm, I'm thinking the uh, this is damaged in some way. It's not really important. I didn't. I just bought it to open it up. I'm not really concerned about getting this thing working or anything. It's, you know, it's, it's such a niche thing and it's completely pointless for me because I would just have it with like the key in it at all times. <laughs> and I don't have a safe. So it's like, what would be the point of having this? They would just steal this and this. So what, what good does that do? And I don't really know what the use case for this thing is because you, you can just encrypt a drive with BitLocker or something. Now, the, the nice thing about this is is OS agnostic. It, it simply just scrambles the data between the disk controller and the drive. So there's really no um, driver or anything like that needed. The drives itself are um, they're set up in a RAID 1, or sorry, RAID 0. So they're just striped for speed. So you get 8 terabytes total. But if one fails, everything fails. There's no control over it whatsoever. You can't set it to a mirrored configuration or anything like that. And the, like I said, there's there seems to be something wrong with this thing where it's powering off. And, and even the lights on this don't seem to work properly. There's a power LED, a backup LED, a one and two access LED, a key type LED for each one and a key status. When you, basically it's just all on. And when you plug in the key, I think a couple of them light up and that's about it. There's actually a spot for a second key. Uh, this one's not fitted with it, but you can custom order one that requires two keys simultaneously to unlock the drive. So you could give one to one person, one to the other. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, the drive itself has no interface whatsoever. You just simply plug the key in and it shows up, pull the key out, it disconnect. One thing I noticed about this drive while using it was that it gets incredibly hot. And the metal chassis works as a decent heat sink, but not enough because it gets up to around 50 degrees, which is not a temperature I like to keep hard drives at. And it does have a fan, but the fan actually does nothing. I mean, from what I can tell, it does absolutely nothing except make a ton of noise. The grill for the fan right here, the vent, is the only opening in the case. There's simply nowhere for the air to go except through possibly the firewire connector, but this thing just doesn't have enough airflow to actually move any air through that. There's just too much static pressure against it. So it just doesn't work. And this thing just gets hotter and hotter and hotter and the fan is super loud. So taking the back off, we can see that there's a little connector for the fan. 
a little uh, molded piece for the, the power, or sorry, the backup button. And this piece is quite sturdy. I mean, the whole thing is made quite well, but look, they've just stuck this fan on with like double-sided tape. It's all like melted in. There's like just some electrical tape holding it together for, for the wiring. They've cut the uh, tachometer wire. It doesn't, doesn't go to the board. And this fan is so unbelievably loud. Well, it is stuck on pretty well. Um, and it, it just moves no air. It's like a 20 millimeter fan. <laughs> so I don't know what the hell they were thinking with that. I'd rather them just passively cool it. It's not doing anything anyway. So if we remove the board, see that it's just an empty chassis. There's really nothing inside it. It's just the aluminum shell. Uh, I just stuck two broken hard drives in here. Uh, just so you get an idea of what it looks like. Like I said, the uh, drives it's, the drives that came with it are currently inside the NAS. And it's a pretty simple layout. You just have the power supply stuff. You've got a couple controllers. I don't know if these are the encryption controllers or what, but we'll take a look at it. And you have this mounting system, which actually offsets the drives, which I thought is kind of neat. And the way that works is they use these angled brackets, which connect to the side mounting screws on one drive and the bottom mounting screws on the other and they just reverse it on the other one. That's kind of a clever idea to mount two drives in a pretty compact area. The drives are just normal SATA drives. There's nothing special about them. Like I said, these aren't even the drives that came with it. These are just two broken drives, but uh, yeah, they're just, they're just normal desktop, um, 5,400 RPM Seagate drive. The board is essentially one big ground plane. Just, it's really just mounting for all the drives. They have connections going out to all these LEDs and through the, to the Firewire connectors. It also looks like they have provision for three buttons here, but they're not fitted. They sell a whole bunch of different models of this. And the PCB is a pretty sturdy one. I guess they've, they've specifically chosen a pretty, pretty decent quality uh, fiberglass board to, to survive being inserted and to survive the weight of all the drives. Although once it's all screwed together, I think it holds it together pretty well. And uh, yeah, that's about it. They've got a couple daughter boards on it, which we'll take a look. And there's tons of bodges all over this thing. Now, these are pretty low volume things. So you expect to see a bunch of mistakes on the, on the thing. They're not gonna be spinning new boards for every minor problem on this thing. And uh, the price on these is astronomical. The eight terabyte one with, you know, like $200 worth of drives, maybe 250 if you're buying them retail, sells for $900, which is insane. And all, it's, all you're paying for is the encryption key. I mean, like really it's just this custom board and that's about it. So there's quite a bit of markup on it. I don't think they're developing any of this stuff in house, so, I mean, it's really, they're probably just manufacturing these themselves instead of putting it into a smart card. And that's about it. And they just jack up the price to astronomical levels. This is the board with the encryption chips on it. These are Enova X-Wall MX256 chips. And what these do is provide real-time serial ATA encryption 256-bit AES. These simply run in between the hard drives and the uh, the interface, and they just provide encryption in real time. They can go up to 150 megabytes a second per drive, and uh, yeah, they they're um, they've got a little um, picture on their website that show just how versatile these chips are. They allow uh, all sorts of different interfaces for decrypting it, pin numbers, smart cards. Uh, obviously, they've modified these into physical uh, keys. It's a really interesting specialized use chip. And uh, yeah, we got two of those in here with a little 25 megahertz clock crystal. They look like, it looks like they botched on a million of these tantalum caps. Although some of these, I guess most of these are, are intentional. Get the focus on that. But yeah, it's just a little bit of power supply stuff on the back, providing whatever core voltages and stuff these things need. Uh, these are actually custom ASICs, so um, I'm not sure what process they're using, so they could be running on pretty much anything. And uh, yeah, this, these just sit in between the drives. 
Theoretically, you could replace these in different models because it is a daughter board. So it's possible they have one of these with a single chip. They maybe have one with more chips. I'm not sure, but it would let them configure this how they need. And you could probably put in the 128-bit uh, versions as well if uh, you have a lower uh, encryption model. And it's possible that the original ones came with 128-bit and these newer models came come with the 256. This is the second daughter board on this thing. And this one has a PL2773 from Prolific, which is a uh, USB 3 to eSATA bridge. Um, or sorry, USB 3 eSATA to regular SATA bridge. And it looks like they have space for another controller. So again, this is probably used in another product, which has maybe four drives installed. And there's, again, all sorts of bodges on this thing. You got big blobs of solder with caps added and stuff. But, you know, like I said, it's to be expected on a low volume product like this. They have space for more power supply stuff. So that looks like a copy of this stuff. Yeah, I think that's just an exact copy of that, of the power supply here. So that would just be providing the apparently uh, 1.2 volts for the core voltage on this thing according to their website and uh yeah that's it it's just this is just the interface card and again it's a, a daughter card so they can swap this out with different models depending on um, the chassis that they're installing this into and the features and if you look at the back of the case you can see there's space or little marks for uh firewire 800 ports so that would be an example of another controller that they'd be using in this one that supports firewire 800 Obviously, that'd be an older model. They won't, they won't put that on a modern one. This is the main board with a big power supply, a switch mode controller. This will be pro providing the uh, 5 volt and eventually lower voltages for all the core voltages of the chips. The 5 volt will go to the hard drives. They require 5 and 12 volt. And you can see it is just covered in bondages as well. There's flux residue all over it. If you look on the back especially, I mean, that is just horrendous. They did not clean this at all. There's a little bit of plastic shielding here to prevent shorts. Uh, I think these are all just LED drivers because they all run off to all the LEDs. And that is about it on this one. Aside from this controller right here, which is a JMB352, which is a high-speed USB serial ATA2 to dual RAID bridge chip. So what this is doing is handling the hardware RAID for the two drives. And it only has an external interface of either serial ATA or USB 2. So the architecture of this thing is that the incoming USB 3 goes through the controller on this daughter board to provide the USB 3 and the eSATA. And then it goes through this JMB chip, which converts it into two serial ATA streams for the two drives, the, the RAID array. And then, then it goes through the encryption chips, one per drive, and then that gets passed on to the actual drive. And it's kind of a convoluted system because this chip doesn't support USB 3. If they had a USB 3 chip on this, or a RAID controller, a more modern one, they wouldn't need this extra card with the USB 3 controller and it would reduce costs, but it's possible they just, at the time they may, maybe just couldn't get them. It's also possible that just simply you couldn't get uh, USB 3 um, RAID controllers at the time all integrated like that. So uh, they had to use this dual chip solution. And then there's just a couple support chips like odds and ends for the USB 3 interface and stuff like that. Okay, let's try and get into one of these. This may just be completely potted, so we might not be able to get into it properly. But this one's actually quite bent. It looks like they had it inserted and then someone whacked it. So the acrylic seems a little creaky and cracky. So it might be... Oh yeah, it's already, uh, it's already broken right here. That's pretty easy to get apart. It's just uh, heat staked in and had a like a simple, easy to remove plastic cover. That's pretty funny. I expected it to be potted or something. But anyway, we have this chip here and I'll see if I can, oh, there's a couple chips. Oh, this looks like a little voltage regulator. Uh, let me look these up and figure out what the hell this is. 
Okay, so this is a little weird. There's two EPROMs on this. I don't know why they have two of them. It seems a little odd to have just two separate 2K EPROMs. And this just looks like a voltage regulator. I don't think it's anything, unless it's a, uh, like a really small PIC microcontroller or something. But yeah, and they're, <laughs> they're from two different brands. One's from Microchip, one's from some other company. I think it starts with an L. And <laughs> yeah, that's all that's on this thing. So um, I'm going to try and find my EEPROM reader and see if I can just read whatever the hell's on these things. It's probably just a single code. I mean, they won't need to store too much on this thing, so I, I don't know why they have two chips. I mean, it makes no sense. In theory, this is just the key. So the microchip one doesn't really have much on it. It just says default, and it's got a couple of, like, a little string of character, uh, numbers and a couple of random characters at the top, which, who knows, maybe the encryption key. But let's try out this other chip. I hate these things. They're so fiddly to put in the chips. Come on. Come on. There we go. Well, that's interesting. One has default 1884 and the other one has 1885. And they also have different codes at the top. Well, it's kind of obvious now, but one EEPROM is for one encryption controller and the other is for the other encryption controller. And the reason why they have two different chips, uh, brands, is probably just because that's what they had. So that explains the mystery of why they have two EEPROMs on this thing. Well, kind of expected, but this turned out to be a pretty straightforward drive enclosure with the exception of a couple encryption chips. You know, the really funny thing about all this is the one inherent weakness of having a physical key to decrypt the drive is that when it's resold, it's sold with the key. So when I got this, initially the drives were working uh, inside the enclosure. They since stopped, so that's why I took them out and just had the dummy drives, like I said before. But the drives were working when I got this. I was able to run unerase software because I had the key. It turns out this drive was owned by someone who did contracting, uh, building, uh, there were a bunch of blueprints and stuff for different uh, buildings. I think they were all around California. And obviously they finished using this thing and sold it. And the really funny thing is, uh, one of them was for a US Air Force base. So obviously they got uh, probably audited before they got the the, uh, the project that they have to have a 256 bit AES encrypted drive you need to have hardware keys and blah 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 and then they end up selling the drive with the data on it that makes sense oh well at least I know how to destroy data and I'll take care of it for you you're welcome federal government